Hi, everybody. Hello. Looks like we have a presentation. So I know the person that was in here earlier said, hey, the next talk is not till 7 or 5.45. So, but I'm next. So I'm Kim Bannerman. Um, I just joined Google Cloud in May. Um, if you were at the Santa Clara Summit, I was your MC, so I apologize for whatever I said. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to give you a vendor pitch. This is a gold-sponsored lightning talk for vendors that are in the gold sponsorship level of Cloud Foundry Foundation. And I think we talk about tech a ton, but we don't talk about who. When you're trying to do transformation, all these buzzwords you hear all the time, digital transformation, it matters who's on your team, right? So we are talking about how we're going to scale this giant mountain, what tools we're going to use. Are we going to use Kubernetes? Are we going to use something else? Um, I will tell you this. Everyone in Silicon Valley thinks they know it all, right? But that's reality. <laughs> we're constantly arguing about what level of abstraction that our customers should be focused on. Containers, platforms, serverless, functions, you name it. When really, <laughs> our customers are just trying, and we're running towards the future. Sorry, I forgot about that slide. Um, when our customers are just trying to get to the cloud. Um, a lot of us have been in the cloud space for many years, um, even when people were not calling. Uh, they were calling it cloud, but it really wasn't cloud. It was data center virtualization and, and all these different things. So I think we should stop arguing about that and let customers pick where they want to go on to, how they want to get on the cloud, right? So that's just my opinion. Um, I see this every day. I work with our biggest customers uh, for Google Cloud Platform. Um, you know, we try to go in and have two ears and one mouth for a reason. That's what my grandmother always said. Um, and really listen to what their problems are. And it really does matter uh, what they're trying to accomplish and who is on their team matters even more. Um, we go in and we tell them, you know, this is how we implement. Hey, tell us how you do things. And so we talk about SRE. We talk about CRE, which is a new program. It's customer reliability engineering. Not every application and not every product inside of Google actually has dedicated SRE, which is a really aha moment that you think, oh, well, I just assume SREs are everywhere inside of Google. Um, but that's not true. Just like CRE program is not going to be a perfect fit for every application or every customer. Um, we would love for them to use CRE, obviously. Um, we think it's a, a really great way to go. Um, but you know they may not be there yet. So we try to show them a little bit of how we do things, but we fully don't expect everyone to be at Google scale, um, which I think a lot of people assume that that's how we go in, but not really. Um, we tell data. We have data, because you can't make decisions without data, right? We tell stories, because that inspires um, a mission, inspires action, inspires really um, a community and kind of a, a revolution happening, uh, for lack of a better you know, term. Customers really want to hear um, how other companies got there, right? So we talk about the who. Um, and I'm not talking about you need four developers, you need this many people over here. No, we talk about the mindset of what it's going to take to get where you're going. And so for me, like, building teams for years and years and consulting and then engineering teams and then eventually advocate teams. Um, it's my job to block and tackle and make sure that my team, I can keep them as effective and doing the things that give them energy as much as possible. That means uh, removing barriers. That means uh, having more meetings and that way they don't have to have meetings. Um, making sure the collaboration is there and they're getting the data and all the resources, tools that they need um, that they can move faster and they can work um, the way they like to work. Um, that's a really key thing. Knowing what gives you energy and what drains you is a huge thing. And if you've never done that exercise, like I encourage you all to go back and, and do a little bit of uh, Googling <laughs> and uh, kind of try to figure that out for yourself. And then make sure that whatever is draining you now in your job, you don't make that mistake in the next job that you get promoted to or get recruited away to. Um, and that way you find what your strengths are, for real. So it really comes down to a growth versus fixed mindset. And everyone thinks that either you have a growth mindset or you have a fixed mindset and you can't change, but that's not true. A lot of us, if you look at the list of different components of various sides, we'll have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But really, as a leader, it's up to you to inspire a growth mindset inside of your company. Um, and it's really um, getting there is not easy. Um, this is typically, not typically what we see, but this is you know maybe you know, older mindsets, right? This is more of a fixed mindset. Um, avoids challenges, ignores criticism, um, threatened by others, gives up, you know, sees efforts as fruitless. And that is not a component of a bad or a toxic employee. That is a component of a toxic culture. 
because as we know, command and control does not work. It is 2017. So if you see people in your team or your groups, try to find out why they feel that way. Because I can guarantee you they're not a bad person. They just don't feel like they have the power to get done what they need to get done. This is what should be happening instead. And this is what you inspire as a leader. Embracing challenges. All the things that should be common sense. And the, I don't know about you, but this is the kind of culture I work in now, thank goodness, and I always want to work in. Um, I'm inspired by everything my colleagues do at Google, and I'm learning new things every day, as we should. Um, so that's why tech is a perfect place for a lot of us that do tend to have that growth mindset, but we're just, you know, you know, don't want to, I don't know. I, so, but, but you get stuck in those jobs, right, where you're not necessarily growing as fast as you want to, and um, the opportunities aren't always there. So once you get to that point um, and you're testing out, maybe you're trying Kubernetes, you're trying Cloud Foundry inside of your company and you're having some success, you're gonna fail. Um, and that's okay. Take failure and switch it to, le uh, to learning. And just changing your mindset about how you see things um, can help you on this personal level go faster, and especially as a team. Um, when you start having success, other teams inside of your company are going to start noticing, and they're going to ask you to do a lunch and learn. They're going to ask you, you know, in the water cooler or by the beer cooler or whatever you do for your engineers, um, how did you do that? That's amazing. Can you teach us how to do that, or can we come sit with you? Can we pair, or whatever it is that your culture is about? And so it starts, it starts scaling on its own. It's very organic. We've got customers um, that we've seen that happen to. And this is just a little plug for... Um, the communities that I'm involved in and um, where I'm seeing our bigger customers uh, the tools that they're using primarily to make that transformation, which is open source. And then if you want to know more about all of our open source, that's the link. So thanks. <laughs>